Hi folks, come on in. Today, Pat Gregory is going to show us how he teaches people to get started carving. So let's go over in the shop. Hi, I'm Pat Gregory, uh, and I'm a decoy carver. I've been carving decoys for uh, just under 30 years. I got started uh, carving decoys because I have a, a tradition of decoy carving in my family. And uh, uh, men enough to me that um, although I didn't learn to carve from my great-granddad, um, I, I pursued it and, and learned how to carve decoys. And today I want to talk to you about, um, you know, maybe you want to get started carving decoys. Um, how do you get started? Um, uh, what are the things you need to think about uh, even to, to, to get started? And so I just wanted to take a few minutes of your time today to explore that, okay? So when I start working with a student, um, there's several things I'm going to recommend, even before you even pick up a knife or a, a rasp, is, is to study. Um, in my 30 years, the, my studying has been probably my number one asset for the success of my decoys, and so I'm really big on studying. So what do you study? Well, uh, there's really two realms of books that I'm going to point you to. Number one, I'm going to point you to Old Carver's. Okay, and, 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 and find some, there's a lot of books written about uh, decoys of the Mississippi Flyway and um, Mason decoys and Michigan decoys. And, um, you know, I want you to get in there and, and, and these books aren't very difficult to find. You can Google them. You can find them in the, in the library. Uh, but, but the point is, 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 is find them. Study them. Study the old carvers, okay? Uh, study a, a, a certain species, okay? So, um, you know, one of the things I generally do with my students is maybe we'll start with the blue wing teal. You know, let's, let's pick a species, let's go with it, and let's start studying not only ducks, but let's start studying that line of, of species, okay? So, so again, we're going to spend some time in some uh, vintage books and study old carvers. The second thing we're going to go to is studying live birds themselves. Nothing like studying um, the actual subject matter itself. So we're going to go to some books like, like Audubon books or um, you know maybe some, some live duck books. And, and you want books that have lots of different poses. You know, you want overhead poses, you want profile uh, side poses, you want different angles. So you can really get down to the details of studying the intricacies and the details of that bird. So, because uh, when you have to carve it, you have to deal with those details. So the next piece of this, um, after the studying, because you got to understand that studying books is only two dimension. Okay, and there's some limitations of that. And, and when you're carving, you're going to be carving in three dimension, right? So you're going to be carving something that has dimension. It's going to be round. It's going to have body to it. Uh, it's got shape. And so um, that, that the, the, the carving books, the, the duck books, are good reference in two dimension. But you're going to have to ultimately figure out shape, size, you know, diameter, stuff like that. So... Uh, one of the things I do with the students is I give them a decoy to take home, you know. Uh, nothing like um, studying, you know, a completed bird because they've already reconciled all that. They've already uh, dealt with the shape. They've already cut the side pocket into it. They've already kind of dealt with the shoulder and the transition down to the chest. So um, one of the things I'd recommend to you is, is um, if you're working with a, 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 you know experienced carver, see if you can borrow one of his decoys. Um, if not, purchase a decoy, go to decoy shows. But the, the main point of it, again, is get a decoy in your hands and study the dimension. And one of the things that I do, and, and I'm really big on this, is I'm a tactile uh, learner. What does that mean? I, I learn from touching. I got to touch it. I got to feel it. I got to feel the shape of it. So get that thing in your hands, okay? So that's one piece of it, is, is, is get a decoy in your hands. Um, the second piece is, is you have to become an experienced waterfowler or an experienced um, subject matter expert on ducks. You have to know ducks. You have to know their bills. You have to know the shape of their head. You have to know, you know where their shoulders are. So you have to pay attention to the details and, and know, you know your duck anatomy. Because if you have to carve that thing, if you have to replicate it, you know that's going to become extremely important. So we talked about, uh, thus far we've talked about um, you know, studying, we talked about studying, you know, vintage carvers. We talked about studying the birds themselves. We talked about, uh, you know, studying decoys themselves. If you can get loaner decoys or 
pick a decoy up at a show. We've talked about studying the details of the bird. So, so let's get into the material. All right. So, so now I'm thinking about um, what am I get? What, what kind of materials am I going to use? Um, there's a, there's actually uh, quite a few resources out there that are helpful today. Um, um, resources that come to mind: um, the Duck Blind. Uh, TheDuckBlind.com, Willie McDonald does a great job. He not only sells materials, but uh, they actually sell cutouts. They sell uh, kits. So let's say, for example, you don't have a bandsaw yourself, and maybe you just want to carve your first bird. You're not ready to invest in all the big tools. Um, a kit is a good way to go, you know, where you can actually, uh, they'll cut out the head for you, they'll cut out the body, they'll do all the trimming off of it, and for all intents and purposes, you're ready to brace that block up and start carving it, okay? So there are um, uh, vendors that, that actually cut out kits. If you're uh, looking at maybe cutting your own wood or cutting your own cork, um, you know, good materials are generally softwoods, all right? So softwoods include things like basswood, white pine, white cedar, um, then you get into some exotics like tupelo, jayatong, you know, even balsa wood. Uh, but, but, but your softwoods are really where you want to spend your time and money in your carving because it's going to make carving a pleasure and not a labor. So we've talked about materials and uh, maybe uh, you've chosen your materials and now you think you're ready to start carving. Let me just take a minute to breathe some, uh, some uh, you know, high level tools, some, some uh, basic tools that you'd need. So the first thing you're going to need is, is a good uh, carving knife. I use a worn knife. Uh, it's a real common knife to the market. They have interchangeable blades. They're very sharp. They're very good. Uh, you can buy them and uh, the blades are actually resharpenable, but they're also interchangeable. So a good knife uh, for carving the head. Um, then you're going to get it, and also in the knife family, you got a couple other knives. This is a knife. This is a draw knife. This actually happens to be my great grandpa's draw knife. And, uh, uh, but a draw knife is the knife family. This is really helpful on bodies. Uh, for example, on, on taking wood off of bodies, this can take off a lot of wood. Another member of the knife family is the spoke shave. There's a blade in here, okay? So it's a, it's a blade, and uh, this is really good on bodies as well, taking a lot of that, those shavings off the body, so a spoke shave is handy. Um, jumping over kind of to the rasp family, um, you got a surf worm, which is kind of the cheese grater of wood. Um, and you can buy these. This is a Stanley. You can get these on the market pretty cheap. But I always go with a round blade. Um, that round blade, keep in mind, when you're carving, you're carving in the round. And if you're going to carve in the round, you need round tools, okay? So these generally come standard with a flat blade. I ditched that. Get the round blade in there. It's going to work for you. Um, so another member of the rasp family, is a, this is a cabinet rasp. Um, good fine rasp. Uh, this is really good on the, the, the body itself, but uh, it's good around the tail area, the chest area, and tight areas. So, so you've got knives, you've got um, rasps, and then uh, sanding material. You know, this is, a, this is what we call bow sander. It's kind of a belt sander, so to speak. Uh, um, it's kind of in the shape of a hacksaw, and we make them ourselves. Tear a half inch belt, staple it on here, and you can just really get on here and, and do some good fine sanding on the bodies. I actually, uh, when I first started carving, this uh, unit right here did all my sanding, okay? So, and you can actually make this yourself. So again, uh, you've got knives, you've got rasps, and you've got sanders, and, and really with that, th those three families of tools, you're set. So you've got your tools, you've got your materials, uh, now you're ready to have some fun. Um, let me give you a couple pieces of advice. Number one, uh, don't be scared to make mistakes. This is only wood, you know? Uh, I've learned more from my mistakes in 30 years of carving than I ever did my successes. So don't be scared to make a mistake. We can always cut out a new block. That's number one. Number two is, is the key to this is really carving away the, what doesn't look like a duck, right? Uh, you just want to uh, get in there and take off everything that really doesn't look like that particular species of duck. And so, uh, cut away what doesn't look like a duck. Thanks, Pat. Folks, this was our first episode of In the Shop. 
And going forward, Pat's going to be hosting a whole series of these where he's going to show you how to carve your own decoy. We hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll come back often. And until next time, I'll see you in the shop.